We're back now with the fast food wars as customers demand lower prices. Janae Norman is here with how some chains are trying to lure customers back. Good morning, Janae. Good morning, Michael. Lure them back after prices push many away. Yesterday, we reported how Red Lobster's endless shrimp promotion was way more popular than the company anticipated. Customers want a deal, and the fast food chains want their dollars. Please lower your prices. <laughs> You can't go up any further. You can't. You can't. This morning, fast food chains are putting value meals back on the menu. At Wendy's, you can get English muffin and seasoned potatoes for just three bucks. Wendy's now offering a $3 English muffin deal, which includes seasoned potatoes and your choice of a bacon or sausage egg and cheese English muffin sandwich. The meal, less than the average cup of coffee. It's a great deal for, for consumers at the drive through It's an even better deal for Wendy's. Wendy's telling ABC News, we're giving fans even even more ways to satisfy their morning cravings for a price they can feel good about. The English muffin deal joins their $5 biggie bag and two for $3 breakfast bundles. Egg and cheese biscuit and sausage biscuit. Two biscuits. Customers hungry for deals as prices for food grow across the board. Fast food prices in March were 33% higher than back in 2019, according to the Labor Department. The prices are... All right, guys, so we got to talk about some more fascinating developments in Biden's terrible economy. As we've talked about certain fast casual dining restaurants going out of business or going bankrupt, like, for example, Red Lobster and the Cheddar Biscuits, they're closing down a lot of their restaurants. There's also a whole lot of other fast casual restaurants that are closing down due to the fact that they cannot survive in Biden's economy now the businesses that are surviving they're having to increase prices in order to try to stay afloat at least up until now because consumers are fed up right they're sick and tired of paying these high prices for fast food for groceries for the essentials okay people just fed up and they're saying like okay i'm gonna cut back on the spending, okay? I'm just not going to spend as much money as I used to. I'm going to cook at home. I'm going to do whatever I can to survive Biden's economy, which means there will be less overall consumer spending and foot traffic in these fast food restaurants and in these stores that depend on people coming out and spending money consistently in order for them to make money. So in order to get these people back in the door, because we have seen a decline in foot traffic in some industries and sectors of the economy, like, for example, fast food. Um, again, you have a price war happening where you have uh, restaurants like, for example, McDonald's and a Wendy's competing against each other to offer what they call value meals to get people to come back to their restaurants, right, to start eating fast food again because people are abandoning and ditching fast food due to the fact that it's no longer affordable for the target demographic slash target audience of people that eat at these restaurants the most, which are middle class, lower middle class, and again, lower income earners um, who, again, are struggling the most due to Biden's inflation. So again, McDonald's, Wendy's, they're competing against each other to offer the lowest prices on certain meals in order to get customers back. Now, the same thing is happening in the big box retail space, okay? Stores like uh, a Walmart and a Target have now entered a price war as well to offer lower prices on some essential items in the store in order to get people to continue to shop there and to increase the size of the average amount of money that they spend per trip to the store because this is how big box chains like a Target or a Walmart make money. They make money from people coming into their store and buying a lot of things at a low margin, okay? And in Walmart's case, um, their earnings have been pretty good. However, uh, their earnings have been subsidized by higher income earners who typically don't shop at Walmart, but it seems as if inflation has gotten so out of control that higher income earners are now shopping at Walmart in order to compensate. And the former CEO of Walmart sees this as a problem for Walmart in the future, that Walmart could actually be in a bubble due to uh, inflation being a tailwind for them. Stephanie, you, you used the word bubble when it came to Walmart stock. Why did you choose that word? 
Well, sure. First of all, it's good to be with you. And the conversation you're having, I think, is the, is the right one. The the trade down that Walmart's seeing in in from the affluent consumer into the business is not anything new. It happens. Uh, every time there's a you know an economic challenge, and we we've seen it historically, um, some of them stay and some of them go, and uh, it'll be really interesting to see this time how many stay and, and how many leave. And it's a different company now with the digital capabilities that they have than it than it has uh, than it was the last time this happened. But the real issue is, uh, you know, and the challenge is that the. The tailwinds that have come from food inflation that have pushed Walmart along will reverse eventually. And, and we're starting to see some of that happen now. Are those same tailwinds that drive that, that drove the food business will become headwinds. And you'll sort of see a reversal between Walmart and Target. Target's breakdown of each of their categories is very similar to Walmart, but their overall business is impacted by the food general merchandise mix. And so as tailwinds shift to headwinds and vice versa, I think you're going to see some changes in the dynamic. So at the crux of this uh, use of the word bubble is the, is the notion that what has been helping to drive its sales, which is the, the gain of the higher income consumer, those, some of those consumers will not stay. Why do you think they didn't stay in the past? It seems like it would be easier to stay, uh, easier than ever to stay at this point because it's more of a digital commer- uh, pl- commerce platform and you can buy groceries and everything all at once. You can pick up in store, you can get it delivered. It's just a lot more convenient and easier to stay with that, that platform. Well, you know, I think that's really the difference between now and the last time that it's happened. Typically, what happens is, you know, when money's tight, people react, even even high end consumers react. The Walmart experience is better than it used to be, but it's still not, uh, you know, a premium experience. Walmart's built on uh, convenience, cost and assortment, not on service. And so as as, uh, you know, the the economic challenges abate and, and we all believe that they will eventually the service will become more important than than convenience and price and we'll see a shift back of some of the consumers yeah so what this guy is saying in a nutshell is that well because the economy is not so great right now uh walmart's bread and butter consumer customer um they're not shopping at walmart as much in regards to how much money they're spending however walmart is able to make up with that because higher income earners, more affluent customers are shopping at Walmart because even they make changes to their spending habits when we're in an economic downturn, right? The fact that you have more affluent people shopping at Walmart says that the economy is not in great shape because if the economy was in great shape, then they wouldn't be shopping at Walmart, right? That is essentially the argument that he's making. And he's saying this could be a problem for Walmart in the future. Now, Uh, Target has started a price war with Walmart because, again, they want to compete for foot traffic, right? Consumers are essentially saying, no, we don't want to continue paying these high prices anymore. So Target is saying, okay, you know what? We're going to lower prices on some things in order to try to compete more with Walmart uh, amid uh, customers struggling with inflation. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Price war has begun. Starting today, Target is lowering prices on thousands of items in an effort to attract more customers during the summer months. The idea is to help those dealing with the impacts of inflation while drawing shoppers away from rival Walmart. KTLA Shelby Nelson joins us live in Upland with the story. Shelby. Sure, Micah, even though the rate of inflation is down, people are still paying a lot for many goods that are more than they were pre-pandemic. Now, as for that announcement that Target made of the 5,000 items they're going to be slashing their prices for, well, they say they've already slashed prices for 1,500 and counting. Walmart and Target, some of the biggest retailers, and they're competing for your business. I'm glad they're going into competition even more. What that means? More deals. I think it's great. I think, you know, they should. (laughs) Just today, Target Corporation announced that it is slashing prices on about 5,000 items, from soda to milk, bread, produce, pet food, and diapers. I'll get even more here, I guess. Our rents keep going up, and I can't afford to survive anymore. Upland resident Richard Martin now only shops at Walmart because he says it's all he can afford. Same goes for his mom, Donna, who came here for groceries. So we're looking at the bread right now, and I'm looking at the or wheat, 100% whole wheat. And here at Walmart, it's 4.24. 
so it's about 35 cents more for the oral wheat here at this target but i do see a deal for dave's killer bread some items at Walmart were less expensive. Bananas, on the other hand, were cheaper at Target. I was at Walmart not too long ago and I felt like I spent more on all the things I had bought than I do here. The price wars between retail giants are giving consumers an edge. So why the sudden cuts to rake in customers? Our KTLA business and consumer expert David Lazarus weighs in. What we're seeing right now is basically a response to years of high inflation. So for many consumers, especially those living paycheck to paycheck, this is an untenable situation and they are cutting back on their spending and that is what's freaking out retailers already walmart has announced its own aggressive price cuts and to compete target has now stepped up with a new multi-pronged price cut strategy inflation yeah well this is again why i'm somewhat skeptical of these claims of price gouging right and i'm not saying that it's not possible i'm not saying that they're not doing that that some companies aren't just you know jacking up the price and using inflation as an excuse but again if you're a big box retailer like a walmart for example uh you really don't have a business incentive to do it unless literally everybody in the industry is doing it as well too uh because you compete based off price right you are a low price or low cost provider people come to you because they know that they're going to get the lowest price for the item. So, you know, if Walmart is price gouging, uh, it's probably not good <laughs> for their business model because less people will shop at Walmart. I mean, you, you're not coming to Walmart to get great service, right? So if you can't get the lowest price at Walmart, then <laughs> there's no reason to come to Walmart, okay? This is why Walmart is in big competition with Amazon because Amazon is essentially, um, you know, been dominant when it comes to price and offering things at a low cost and also with convenience so this is why they try to compete with amazon so heavily but yeah i mean i'm just saying that um you know the Biden administration democrats claim that well inflation doesn't exist um it's price gouging it's the fault of the big corporations they're greedy and i'm not saying that some of them aren't greedy okay i'm not saying that some of them aren't price gouging but i'm just saying that you have to believe that that is just happening everywhere that all the companies are saying hey we're going to price gouge and that's just not how it works in capitalism because in capitalism there is equilibrium when it comes to demand and price okay because again in a business like walmart's for example um if they charge too much as they price gouge then that will decrease the demand for their goods and services which will not help them maximize profit okay so in walmart's case their business model how they maximize profit is through selling in volume right so what these stores are doing is that they're saying hey you know what in order to continue to sell in volume we're going to lower the price of a lot of these essential goods even if we have to take a loss on it in order to get people in the store and if they come in the store then they'll buy other stuff that have higher margins and we'll be able to make money in volume because more people are going to be buying more things due to the decrease in price okay so um best believe uh they're making some uh cuts on the back end or they are increasing the price of some other items goods and services in order to compensate for some of these price decreases that they're doing in order to get people to continue to shop at their store it's a pretty fascinating thing what's happening in biden's economy um you're actually learning a whole lot of real life economics and business lessons from all of these stories and how these companies are responding to the economic conditions that we're in right now it, it really is fascinating stuff and slightly cooled last month after being unexpectedly high from january to march while consumer prices rose 0.3 percent from march to april laz says it's all about getting you in the door even if these big box retailers have to take a loss on certain items also yeah so again it's so funny how they keep saying that inflation is going down or they keep implying that and that could be a part of what's happening here right you could have some of these big box retailers, uh, some of these restaurants right before the election say, hey, we're going to start cutting prices <laughs> right right before Biden's re-election. OK, uh, and, you know, who knows? You, you can never underestimate the political angle to this. OK, because um, essentially if these retailers start to really lower their prices going into the election, that is the one thing that could save Joe Biden, if there's a perception that the economy is getting better, that things are turning around, that prices are decreasing, people feeling better about the state of the economy, that is the one thing that can actually save Joe Biden, right? So I'm just saying, you can't 
you cannot forget the potential political angle here as well, too. I'm not saying that they're doing it because of Biden, but I'm just saying um, right before the election, I just find it suspicious. OK, I'm just saying. For the big boys like Target and Walmart, volume is the key. So it's not about making a fast score on each individual sale, but rather having lots and lots of those sales. And that adds up cumulatively over time. And who knows, you might go in for some groceries and end up leaving with some shoes or maybe a handbag in my case. Uh, that's ultimately the goal of these big box retailers. Now, Laz says make sure to shop around and go bargain hunting if you really do want to find those cheaper prices. This is likely going to be lasting through the summer. And if you do shop at smaller retailers, they might not have as much wiggle room to compete. That's the very latest here in Upland. I'm Shelby Nelson, KTLA 5 News. All right, Shelby, thank you. On the other end. Yeah, so again, fascinating developments, right? So, you know, again, this is a win for consumers, right? I'm glad that <laughs> Target and Walmart, they're deciding to lower the price of certain things, okay, in order to help give people some relief when it comes to inflation. But it really does show you um, how, at the end of the day, the customer, the consumer, um, is king, okay? And these businesses respond to consumer behavior. And if consumers pull back on spending, if they say, hey, we're not going to spend as much here, uh, businesses respond, right? And then they, you know, cut prices and they try to win customers back uh, via this type of competition that we're seeing happening in the big box retail space and in the fast food space. So uh, we will see how long this lasts. Again, I think it's suspicious that this is happening right before the election. But regardless, it's a win. Maybe it's a small W for, you know, consumers that are looking to pay lower prices just to survive. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.